Welcome everyone to this PowerPoint video presentation. This series will be a verse-by-verse -verse exposition on Daniel chapter 11. In today's presentation, we will be covering verse 1. Please be sure to have your Bibles handy as we'll be referring to them frequently. And now we'll be going into our prayer. So if you can kneel where you are or just simply bow your head. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, that you've allowed us to see. We thank you for your mercy and your providences, your providential care. We ask, Lord, now that you please cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from any sin that may hinder our prayers from being answered. Please send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us understanding and discernment of what we're about to study in Daniel chapter 11. We thank you for hearing our prayers and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please do not listen to or watch this presentation if you have not listened to or watched the preliminary first. Now we're going on to Daniel chapter 11 verse 1 for today's study. Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. In a couple slides we'll be learning who this I is. But which Darius is this referring to? Because there's about three Dariuses referred to in the Bible. So which Darius is this referring to? Well, let's go to Daniel chapter 5. And let's look at verses 30 and 31. And make sure you get your Bible when you read these verses. Daniel chapter 5, verse 30 and 31, it says, In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So this is Darius the Mede. This is the Darius who conquered Babylon in 538 BC. Remember the handwriting on the wall that Belshazzar, grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, saw and his kingdom was conquered? It was Darius the Mede. Okay. The grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, in the midst of the riotous feast of Tammuz, was told by the prophet of the Lord, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it, and thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. The commander who led the forces of the Medes and Persians was Cyrus the Persian, and of him the Lord had said, Thus saith the Lord, thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. So Cyrus is being called the anointed of God, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure. Let's go to these verses, Isaiah 45, 1. Isaiah chapter 45 and paragraph 1. It's the very thing we just read. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates, and the gates shall not be shut. This is a prophecy of the gates of Babylon that were left wide open because Belshazzar and his men were drunk. When Babylon fell, the rule of the Medo-Persian Empire fell first to Darius the Mede instead of to Cyrus. And the angel Gabriel said to Daniel, I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. So. Darius the Mede, the kingdom 
he was the first king. Darius was the first king, and his nephew, Cyrus the Persian, was the second king. So Darius was from Media, his nephew was from Persia. His name was Cyrus. Some people will say, well, how can he have an uncle that's from Media? Or how can Darius have a nephew that's Persian? Well, that's like you have a sister, okay, you guys are Mexican, and she marries uh, someone who's French, okay? So now that child is Mexican and French. They're not just Mexican. So that child has a Mexican side of a family and a French family side. So this is the case. Apparently, one of the relatives related to Darius was Median, and another relative of Cyrus, one of his parents, they were Persian. So this explains that. So the I in Daniel 11 verse 1 is not Daniel speaking, but it is Gabriel, the archangel, or excuse me, not archangel, Gabriel the angel, Michael's the archangel, forgive me. Continuing on with verse 1, Daniel 11, 1, Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. This I is none other than Gabriel. And you can learn about this in Daniel chapter 9, verses 21 through 22, chapter 10, verses 10 through 14, and 21. This was written by Josiah Litch, who was one of Miller's associates. Also referring to verse 1, also in the first year of Darius the Mede, the angel here continues the discourse of the foregoing chapter and announces to Daniel who he is, the same messenger who stood to strengthen him in the first year of Darius the Mede. If you go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, we are counseled that the Father gave the revelation to his son Christ, Christ signified it and gave it to his angel. In Desire of Ages, page 99, paragraph 1, we are told that this angel, his angel, Christ's angel, is none other than Gabriel. Gabriel is the angel that was sent to Daniel to explain the prophecies of the book of Daniel. And it was the same angel, Gabriel, that was sent to John to explain the book of Revelation. Revelation was the unsealing of the book of Daniel. And the angel Gabriel, he next says, in the first verse of the 11th chapter, also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, was within 538 to 537 B.C., because 538 is when he conquered Babylon, even I stood to confirm and strengthen him. In this passage, the angel connects it with the vision in the 8th chapter, then goes on with his instruction to Daniel through the 11th and 12th chapters. So here, he's giving some explanation of Daniel chapter 8, which we'll be going more into detail in the near future, and continues on through chapter 12. The above quote is at the very end of the paragraph. This happened to be a long paragraph. This was written by J.V. Himes, Miller's right-hand man. And you can read that he was Miller's right-hand man in John Loughborough's book, The Great Second Advent Movement, page 124. Regarding Daniel chapter 11, the angel began with the history of the Persian kingdom. For at the time of the vision, the Babylonian monarchy was entirely gone. Whatever the nation and whatever its place in time, its history is noted by the divine historian only during the time 
when it has been an instrument in God's hand to spread his truth or to protect his people. It was for such a time, excuse me, for such a purpose that the Medo-Persian kingdom came into existence. And when it had fulfilled that work and the Spirit of God with, was withdrawn, it passed from the stage of action. The Medo-Persian Empire was born when the time was ripe for Israel's deliverance from the bondage of Babylon. The first king of the United Empire was Darius the Mede. He was a man well advanced in life when he came to the throne, three score and two years old. A score is twenty, three times twenty, sixty, plus two. He was sixty-two years old. But throughout his reign, Gabriel stood by him to confirm and strengthen him. So, when we see Babylon, when we see Middle Persia, when we see Greece, and when we see Rome, whatever the nation, whatever its place in time, its history is noted by the divine historian, only during the time when it has been an instrument in God's hand to spread his truth or to protect his people. And when the Middle Persian kingdom came on the scene, it was to uh, allow their deliverance from the bondage of Babylon. To Darius was given an opportunity to liberate the Jews. The Spirit of God pleaded with him, and it brought Daniel into his favor so that he placed the prophet in the third position in the kingdom. Darius knew of God and his power. How? Because of Daniel. For it was he who spent the sleepless night in prayer while Daniel was in the lion's den. Daniel chapter 6. So we know within just two years, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den after Darius and Cyrus took over Babylon in 538 BC. Darius, however, did no great work for the Lord. He reigned but two years when Cyrus took the kingdom. And we'll be learning Cyrus is his nephew. And this is Stephen N. Haskell, Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 161, paragraph 1 to paragraph 3. SDP is Story of Daniel the Prophet by Stephen Haskell. Darius reigned two years. He died, and Cyrus succeeded to the kingdom. And as the angel stood with Darius the Mede, and with Cyrus in his third year, to influence him so that Daniel's prayer could be answered, it is certain that it was by the influence of his holy angel that the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus to let go the captive people of God. This is the same Cyrus mentioned in Ezra 6.14. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Ezra 6.14 tells us, And the elders of the Jews builded, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet, Zechariah the son of Edo. And they builded and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, and according to the commandment of Cyrus, and Darius, and Artaxerxes king of Persia. This Darius is referring to Darius the Persian, not Darius the Mede, Cyrus's uncle. He was one of the three kings of Persia to declare the decree of Daniel 9.25 in rebuilding Jerusalem, referring to Cyrus. Cyrus, the nephew of Darius, was his contemporary in Persia and successor in Babylon. Contemporary means he was ruling at the same time he was ruling in Persia the same time his uncle Darius was ruling in Medo. And successor in Babylon means he took his place in Babylon. By the death of his father he began to reign in Persia when he was 40 years old and continued 21 years. He then became associated with his uncle for two years at Babylon and after his death continued seven years longer. As Cyrus was the more conspicuous of the two, and shortly became the sole ruler of the Medo-Persian Empire, 
His reign alone is referred to in the canon of Ptolemy, where it is given as nine years, two contemporary with his uncle and seven after his uncle's death. The scriptures speak of him as the successor of Darius and date his first year from Darius's death. Two hundred years before his birth, God called him by name and said of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Isaiah 44, 28 and S.B. is Sylvester Bliss. This was a book written by one of Miller's associates named Sylvester Bliss. Why did God allow Babylon and Medo-Persia to rule over his people? To Babylon God sent his people, the Jews, to scatter the truths of his kingdom and lead men to repentance. The Medes and the Persians received the gospel from this same people in order that there might be no excuse for their refusing Christ. Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 94, paragraph 1, that's by Haskell. God had always intended that Israel should be the teachers of the world, and even after sin had led them into slavery, he gave them an opportunity to teach their captors and their captors' children. So, we're going to find out why they were scattered another time but even through the scattering Genesis 50 20 tells us God can turn the cursing into a blessing God was using this opportunity of sending his people to these pagan lands to spread the truth spread the message at that time now here's the summary for verse 1 number 1 the I in Daniel 11 is Gabriel not Daniel number two Daniel 11 is somewhat of an explanation of Daniel chapter 8 which we will be covering more in the near future number three Darius in verse 1 is Darius the Mede the king who conquered Babylon in 538 BC with the help of his nephew Cyrus king of Persia. Number four, Cyrus the Persian king was the nephew of Darius the Mede. Cyrus became Darius' successor over the whole realm of Middle Persia when Darius died. Number five, God allowed his people captive in these pagan kingdoms so the people there could learn the truth. The end. Any questions? If so, please post them in the comment section below this video. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day. Bye bye.